Hi, my name is Jaya. I'm the incoming station manager at KJHK. Hey, what's up? My name is Cami Coons. I'm the content director here at 90.7 KJHK. Hi, my name is Faith, and I'm the live events and community engagement director at KJHK. Today, I'm going to create what can probably be described as an eldritch horror of a mask. I'm going to be showing you how to make and style a face mask. Hi, my name is Daniel, and uh, for this mask, I really don't have any knowledge of how to use fabrics or sewing. I can't really make a mask myself, but I've got a nice white medical mask, and I figure I'm just going to color it up, add some add some pizzazz to it, and you know, advertise the KJ name at the same time. So that's my plan for this mask. I'm going to be showing you how to decorate a mask, and it's so easy, you can do it from your bed. To start with a plain t-shirt. Um, this one is child sized, so I'm gonna have to make it a little differently than the instructions I found online would suggest. I'm gonna measure about four inches up, I believe. Yeah, that should be wide enough. Um, I'm keeping the hem on the bottom edge because this is going to be a very uh, cheaply put together mask. <laughs> making a line so that when I cut it, it's not totally uneven. All right, so now I'm gonna go along this bottom edge of the shirt and cut along the line I just made. Um, and I'm gonna go all the way across because again, it is a children's t-shirt and I want to make sure it's tall enough for my face and long enough to tie behind my head. So now we've got this we're working with. I'm gonna go ahead and cut um, up one of the sides. Okay, so now I've got a very long, relatively thin, but wide enough for a mask piece of fabric. I know from <laughs> the masks that my infinitely more talented family members have sewed for me that my face is about eight or nine inches wide, fabric wise. So I'm gonna make some marks. Um, right in the middle of this fabric so that I can use the sides as ties. I'm going to cut up to the lines I made on the uh, shirt inside with the gel pen and create my straps. Is basically go a little bit inside the fabric so that I have a nice pretty thick strap but not so thick that it's going to be just ridiculous. And I'm going to cut all the way up to that line and then I'm going to repeat the process up on the top. It's not going to be the um, prettiest mask, um, obviously. We're uh, making do. <laughs> okay, so I'm up to the line on both sides and then I'll just go ahead and cut down along that line to make the side of the mask. So now I've got two strings that will tie in the back and I'm going to repeat that process on the other side. All right, so now as you can see, got this pretty simple mask with um, two ties on the top that'll tie together behind my head, two ties on the bottom. Not the prettiest mask, but it covers my nose, it covers my chin, um, does pretty much what it needs to do. But this is not just a mask making video, this is a mask styling video. And for that, I have um, a bunch of plastic hands that I just own for reasons. Anyway, I'm going to heat up my hot glue gun and then we'll get going. So as you can see, I've got my hands laid out how I want them. You'll notice I have some large hands. And then I have some tiny hands that go on the large hands that go on my fingers. I will spare you all the process of watching me hot glue them all on. So in the process of gluing the initial batch of plastic hands on, I had a thought. And it was, you know what this mask needs more of? And of course the answer was more plastic hands. So I've just about exhausted my collection. Um, all the small ones are on there. The big ones wouldn't all fit, but I think the diversity in size uh, adds a little something. So now I am going to attempt to put this on my face. Um, so it's a little heavy. I went ahead and knotted the t-shirt uh, strings at the corners because I was afraid. But here we go. Here goes nothing. All right, one, bye. 
is on. Other time is on. And oh, there we go. Put that one hand right over my nose so I so I don't uh, forget to have it up high enough that it's covering my nose. It's working okay with my glasses for the most part. Um, yeah, so a fully functional mask that you can wear out um, to your daily outings. Wear it to the grocery store. Wear it while you're walking around the park. Um, you're sure to make some new friends with this mask. I might have to take it for a test run. Uh, see, see what reactions I get. So basically I'm just cutting around the outline that I made with my pattern. And now you can see I've got one piece finished. All right, so now that my two pieces are cut out, it is time to move over to my rather janky sewing machine setup. I'll show you what it looks like. It's uh, sitting on patio furniture because I still don't have a table yet in my house. Just moved. Okay, so mess up number one, I uh, realized that I cut these pieces the same direction. So they will not work unless I want to have one side of my mask light denim and the other side dark denim. Which actually, honestly, we're going to go with it. I think it'll look kind of cool. Okay, so what normally would be right sides together is now one right side and one wrong side together. And we're just going to stitch along this curved edge here, right here. start to see kind of how this is going to be a mask. Go like that. I actually really like the double-sided thing with that going on here. So, and this really fits my face well, which is nice. All right, so it's gonna be the same procedure as last time, only I have a smaller pattern cut out for the inner part um, that also came with the pattern I found online. And there are like a million of them, so it's not hard to find one if you're looking. So as you can see, I sewed along this and this on the bottom. Now I just need to flip this so that we've got our right sides facing out now. And we hide all those ugly seams. Kind of looks like I have a puppet on my hand. Wiggle and stretch everything until it's in place. Kind of looks the way that I want it to. And then I'm going to Take this little flap right here of the denim. I'm gonna fold it down to meet the red liner like that. And then I'm just gonna stitch right here and that's going to create a little tiny casing where I can put, I think I'm gonna use like, I have a shoestring laying around and I think I'm gonna use that as the ties maybe and do that little thing where you have like the bead on the back because I like when they're adjustable like that. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So I'm going to take this little pipe cleaner and fit it on the inside of this nose piece before I completely close off both ends of the mask, just so that I have like a little thing to crimp around my nose so that the mask stays on a little bit better and more comfortably since we're going to be wearing them for long periods of time. Okay, so now I'm going to take this yarn is my chosen threading material. And I'm just gonna feed it through the little holes that I made on the side here. Actually, I might double this. I'm actually gonna tie it here like this. And that way it's kind of like adjustable. So there's the basic concept of how I made my cute little denim mask. Howdy. 
So all I'm gonna be doing today <laughs> is I'm gonna be embroidering it. I've come up with like two other designs that I kind of like. I was thinking I might do little mushrooms, but I'm also extremely lazy. So I think what I'm going to do, and also it is the most versatile, are just like these little abstract squiggles. And I had to like redraw the mask, but they'll probably just go all over. But yeah, I'm just gonna prep the mask and start uh, doing it. Yeah, doing it. Also, in addition to thread, you will need needles because that is important to embroider. And I forgot that, but it is true, you do need them. I always forget how tedious this is. And then I think to myself, God, there are approximately like three, probably more other things that I could have done that would have been a lot easier. But then I remember that my brain doesn't work like that, so that's okay. To transfer the pattern onto this, all I did was draw it directly onto the mask with white colored pencil. Chalk pencil might be better, and I usually have one around that I do for embroidery, but I have no idea where it went, so uh, I just use white colored pencil, which is also like fine. I'm also very loosely following. I like basically immediately disregarded the original design into something different. So was that worthless? Maybe a little in there though. I have like the first like little part done. You can really learn anything from YouTube. Uh, I'm just doing like a really simple backstitch. So whatever that means to you, then you should do it. Or just do whatever you want. Like I honestly kind of would actually no, I'm not changing my design. My brain wanted to for a second. Um, I kind of wish I'd just done little white daisies because that would have been a lot easier, but that's fine. And this is what the mask looked like on. I really liked it and the way that it fit. And then I wore it with this and it's nice because it's black and white. So really you could wear it with anything. And I started out by blocking out some letters, uh, first the K and the J, and then I filled them in with some kind of red and orange in the K and then some purple and blue on the J. And then I decided to kind of add a little bit of a gradient from one side to the other, starting with kind of a green color and then having it blend to a yellow. And then on the other side, I blocked out the H and the K, and I made that one purple, the H purple, and I made the K green, a little different shade of green. And then I kind of kept the yellow blending over onto the other side and then kind of going into a red. Yeah, that's the mask. Don't you wish you could see all of my flowers? Don't you wish you could stare right into the sun? But when you search for love and flowers and